as we continue talking about these power series, we've got two more theorems here. The first one is series multiplication. And if we have a series a sub n that converges to a of x, and a series b sub n which converges to b of x, um, and they converge absolutely for all x within a certain um, radius of convergence, then if we have a third series uh, c of n or c sub n, which is just created by multiplying those two previous series, it is also going to be absolutely convergent um, within that radius, and it's going to converge to the product of a of x times b of x. Okay, so in other words, you can multiply these series together and things are still going to be convergent. Theorem 20 is, says if a series converges absolutely for all x values within a certain radius and f is a continuous function, then if we apply a function to this series, so instead of just looking at x to the nth power, we're looking at f of x to the nth power, it will also converge absolutely um, where the f of x values are within that radius of convergence. So it's going to let us look at a power series that has a function substitution to it. And I'm going to use this theorem 20 here to work this next example. It says find this series interval of convergence, and then within the interval find the sum of the series as a function of x. So we're given the series um, from n equals 0 to infinity of the square root of x over 2 minus 1 all to the nth power. I'm going to rewrite this just ever so slightly. I'm going to turn everything inside of the parentheses into a single fraction. So I'm not going to do a lot here to change this. But that 1 can be rewritten as 2 over 2. And so that gives us the square root of x minus 2 over 2 to the nth power. Okay. So we'll just make things a little easier uh, going forward. So we want to find first the interval of convergence. So to do that, because we're raised to the nth power, I'm going to use the root test. So we're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the square root of x minus 2 over 2 to the nth power. So the nth power and the nth root, of course, cancel out. I need to keep the absolute values around the numerator because x starts at 0. So we could have um, something negative there. So I've got the square root of x minus 2 inside those absolute value bars and the absolute value of 2 in the denominator, of course, is just 2. Since I no longer have an n here, my limit is just what we have here. So we have the absolute value of the square root of x minus 2 over 2. Now this converges absolutely when all of this is less than 1. Or in other words, when the absolute value of the square root of x minus 2 is less than 2. Now, to find the interval of convergence, we're going to do a little bit of algebra here. This is the same thing as saying negative 2 is less than the square root of x minus 2, which is less than 2. Add 2 to everything, and I have 0 is less than the square root of x which is less than 4. And then if I square everything, I get 0 is less than x, which is less than 16. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have my open interval. But once again, I've got to check the endpoints. So I will start with x is 0,
And when x is 0, we're looking at the sum of <clears throat> the square root of 0 minus 2. So the square root of 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So we have negative 2 over 2, or negative 1 to the nth power. And we've looked at this before, and we know that it diverges. At x equals 16, the square root of 16 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2 in the numerator. 2 over 2 is 1, so we just have 1 to the nth power, which is just 1. And that will also diverge. Both of those, <clears throat> excuse me, are by the nth term test. So we know that our interval of convergence is just going to be that open interval from 0 to 16. Now it says, within this interval, find the sum of the series as a function of x. Well, what we have here is just a power um, series, and our r value is the square root of x minus 2 over 2. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. So we can find the sum of a power series. Or, sorry, I misspoke there. I got distracted. We have a geometric series. <laughs> I was like, I'm saying something wrong. We have a geometric series here. Obviously, it's a power series. But we have a geometric series here, and the r is the square root of x minus 2 over 2. Write that out. And then the sum of a geometric series... It's just going to be 1 over 1 minus r. So we have 1 over 1 minus the square root of x minus 2 over 2. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this first 1 into 2 over 2. So we have a 1 in the numerator. In the denominator now, I've got 2 minus the square root of x minus 2. over 2. This negative here turns this negative to a positive. So I've got 1 over 4 minus the square root of x over 2. Taking the reciprocal, we have a sum of 2 over 4 minus the square root of x.